Man oh man, I am back. How's it going everyone? Thank you for continuing to subscribe my video and supporting me and watching my videos. Your support means a lot. And I'm so happy that I'm back sharing my videos, creating videos for you guys. Um, I know it's been a while. It's been a good six, seven months since my last video came out. And there were good reasons for that. Uh, in the last uh, six months, a lot has happened for me, both professionally and personally. So personally, I just had a new baby boy. He is four months old and he has been a handful. And for the professional side is, for those of you who's been following me on my channel, you know that I've been working at, with a big uh, dealership group, uh, Penske, now that I left, but yes, Penske, it was Penske. And you know, I actually wanted something different in my career. It was time for a career change. And I really wanted to get into the EV, electric vehicle space, because I think that is the future. So uh, I went searching for the last six, seven months, and I finally landed a really nice gig at an EV startup company. Um, I'm not saying the company name, but they do make electric trucks. But now that you know my um, personal life has been stabilized and my professional life has kind of um, been done with searching for jobs, I can now focus back on doing what I like as a hobby, doing what I like to do on free time, and that's creating videos for my channel. And you know what's better way to get back into the groove of things other than just talking about my favorite topic, which is Japanese sports car. It's a really good time right now if you're a car enthusiast and you like Japanese sports car. Back in the 90s, that was when the golden era of Japanese sports car was really relevant, right? You had your Supra, you had your 300ZX, you had your uh, RX-7, you had like, your Preludes, Integra, right? You have all those nice cars. And then a dark period came. And this dark period was basically in like the mid late nineties, all the way up to the last couple of years. And this dark period, I call it because it's a transitional period from the sports cars to dan cars to trucks and SUVs. And you still see that trucks and SUVs are really strong for all auto manufacturers, and everyone and their mother wants an SUV or a damn truck. Mm. I feel that. The Japanese sports car is um, coming back and we're in the renaissance of Japanese sports car. And as I mentioned, if you really love Japanese sports car, it's a great time to experience it now. So let's start off with the most obvious car that is just announced. The Nissan Z. Z? Z? Or is it Z? If you haven't seen this, this is a gorgeous vehicle. I mean, when it first came out, when it debuted a prototype, I didn't really like it as much because that grill in the front was really just awkward looking. But when they showed the production like a couple of days ago, they actually changed the color of it, actually made the car look a lot better. And they showed the color in that nice blue, and it just looks fantastic. I'm a big car person, especially blue color, because my own FRS is a dark blue, so I really like that blue. And when I saw the interior of the car, it was also blue. And that really brought me back to my uncle, because my uncle used to have a 1981 Toyota Celica Coupe. It was a white, inside was blue, and every time I sat in it, I would notice the blue, and when I saw the blue on the new Z, it really brought me back. Oh, and speaking of the Z, you know, previously it was called like the 350 or 370Z. Now it's just simply called Z. And speak of specs, it has a, a 3.0 twin turbo engine uh, that makes 400 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque. It comes with a nine speed automatic or a six speed uh, manual transmission. Take that Supra, uh, it comes with a manual. 
And the starting price, Nissan hasn't given an official price, but it should start around 40 grand for the base trim. It'll come in two trim, base or performance. And if you're one of the first ones to actually put deposit and buy one of the first Z, there's actually a, like, a, like a launch edition, which they're only making 240 units of it. 240 units, harking back to the original 240Z. And the complete car is completely redesigned, right? The, out, the, the exterior looks fantastic. The front, you know, harkens back to the 240Z. The back tail light harkens back to the 300ZX, and they modernized the entire interior. You know, now you have a nice touch screen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You have nice soft touch material. You have the three gauges in the center that's reminisce of the OZ of the past, which is really cool. The entire car looks fantastic. I can't wait to see in person actually test drive it. So interesting thing is that even though the entire design is brand new, the bones of a car is actually not new. It's actually off the FM chassis, which uh, is basically when they introduced it. Introduced it in 2002 um, or 2003 when the 350Z came out. That's the same platform, same chassis that it was on. It, it, that, that, that's on the new Z. It's crazy, right? Hell, where was I in... Where was I 20 years ago? 20 years, I was probably still in high school. Dang. It's a good thing, actually. I mean, Nissan engineer re, engineers re kind of um, reconfigured suspension, the driving dynamics, right? They made changes to where it really matter. But a good thing about having an old kind of platform is that all the aftermarket parts should fit or They'll be coming out with new ones without much modification. You could buy used parts in the market, but probably make it fit. The only thing that really worries me is the starting price because the 370Z, you can get one around $33,000, $34,000. Now it's a $40,000 car starting, and I'm not sure if a lot of people could stomach that, especially when the GR86 comes in right under $30,000, right? So we'll see how Nissan will do with the Z. But from what, you know, everything on paper, it looks really promising. And speaking of the GR86, um, that car, uh, the review just came out for a lot of the journalists and other YouTubers. And it's been overwhelmingly positive reviews. I personally have a 2013 FRS. I love that thing to death. It's an automatic, yes, I know. I already hear people unsubscribing to my channel because I have an automatic FRS. I'm so sorry. So sorry. So sorry. But my wife told me either I get automatic sport car or no sports car. So you know what? I'm going to get automatic sport car. And the automatic on FRS is not bad. I love my FRS. But I do wish the engine was a little stronger. I do wish that torque dip was fixed. Uh, but it doesn't really bother me too much. Right? I had the car for eight years now. But the new 86, GR86, actually fixes the torque, the torque dip with a bigger engine. 2.4 liter engine, they fix the torque dip, has a little lower red line, but it's much more powerful, much more stronger. The DNA, the characteristic of the FRS is still there, right? It handles well, center gravity is really low, it's very playful, very fun. Um, there's still going to be uh, two trims. Uh, it ha now has a 228 horsepower, has 180 pound-feet of torque at a lower RPM, 6-speed um, manual or 6-speed automatic with LSD. I like the car. I really like the GR86. I really don't like the back design though. The back design is just weird and ugly to me. I don't know. It's just something about it. It doesn't sit right with me. And I think the original one, the one I have, is more unique. It stands out. Um, and as much as I like the GR86, I wouldn't trade my FRS or some FRS for it because I don't think the updates are significant enough for me to switch up. At least it doesn't bother me. The, the, the issues that the first gen have doesn't bother me as much that warrants the update. And I want to get back to the point that right now we're in a unique time. Think about this. The whole industry still revolves around SUVs and pickup trucks. That's where the money make, maker is, right? And even EV, like electric vehicles, right, or, 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 or hybrids, or um, basically any alternative fuel, right? Yet, the Japanese companies are making sports car. Huh. Sports car in general don't make money for companies. They don't. They do not make money. I mean, they lose money. It's a big gamble for them. I come from the auto industry, and it's a big gamble for sports car because 
usually there's, there's, there's a couple of things that happens. Usually, the, the demand for its workout for first year is super high because you have the hype, right? And after that, it's just a downward trend. And that's why like all these uh, iteration comes out throughout the life cycle of the vehicle just to hopefully keep up the demand, but it will never be as high as the first year. It'll just drop off. That's why a lot of companies like uh, Toyota uh, partners with BMW for the Supra because they don't want to invest all their dollars into a car where they make it themselves. So I really got to applaud Nissan for making a Z that's solely made by Nissan. Sports car is not a car to make money for a company, but it is something to aspire to. It is something to look towards to. It is something to hook a customer into the brand. So I really, really applaud the entire Japanese car industry to really come out with these sports car. And it's great because there's rumors that the second generation 86 was never gonna come to fruition because the sales were dropping off. But here we are, second generation. And we all know, you know, all the other nameplates are here as well, like the Type R, Civic Type R. The second generation is coming on the new Civic platform. You have your NSX that just came out. Obviously, the NSX is going to uh, depart soon, but they just announced an NSX Type S, which is more horsepower, wider body, a little more sporty design. You have Subaru, you have your STI, you have your WRX that's going to be announced really soon. And obviously, we're going to have a new STI from that as well. Who can forget about the Miata? Miata has been around for ages and is going to continue to live on. And Acura just announced that Integra is coming back. Integra. Here are some of the images that they, they, they put out the front. And here are some of the rendering that Motor Trend put out. And a little birdie told me that the back is not going to be like this. It's actually going to be kind of something like this. Let me just kind of draw it out for you guys. It'll be something like that. The back's going to be very similar to like a, a GR86. It's not going to be, some, it's not be like that. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty confident. So many cool cars right coming out. You know, I, I do I do wish that there are two nameplates that really resonates with me that I wish they would bring back. And one's from Honda and one's from Toyota. If you think you know what car I'm referring to, what cars I'm referring to, um, drop a note in the comment. Let me know. I'm curious to see if you are thinking what I'm, what I'm thinking. I'm just so happy that we're kind of back in the 90s again. So look, this video was mostly just focus on the Japanese sport car and my love for them and how you know we're in a renaissance of uh, uh, of this group of exciting and affordable cars it might be the last batch we don't know with the whole industry shifting towards electrification enjoy what we have now and again I'm really happy that for those of you who are watching thank you for continuing to subscribe to me and thank you for watching my 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 channel yeah for those of you who are just you know happy to come across my channel Please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification button as video will drop moving forward every week or so. And make sure you follow me on Instagram at 3 Point Turn. Uh, keep an eye out on the next couple of weeks or so. I'm actually going to be hosting a, a little contest with some giveaways. So make sure you subscribe to my Instagram channel and stay abreast of that. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll talk to you soon.